Polygon, JP Morgan getting ready to become very interesting partners. What this may play out in terms of Polygon, but also in the aspect of where crypto and a lot of what's happening in layer twos. We're going to dive into all that. My name is Paul Barron. Welcome back into Tech Path. Uh, let's get into it today. I want to thank our sponsors, Gala Games. One of the hubs of the future of blockchain gaming is Gala Games. Make sure and check them out. Just go over to their website, games.gala.com. And you can take a look at Spider Tanks. They actually are getting ready to launch this. It's coming up very soon. So uh, take a look if you guys are into blockchain gaming. Maybe you're just considering a token acquisition on Gala, whatever it might be. Uh, or maybe you're just trying to learn a little bit more about blockchain gaming. This is a good place to start. Click the link below. We'll leave some information down there in the description. Let's get into it today. There is a lot here in reference to what's happening right now with uh, JP Morgan. I want to jump to this first article. JP Morgan executes its first DeFi transaction on Polygon. That in itself should have been enough to kind of showcase what we're potentially uh, seeing happen right now. I want to jump to a tweet that was by the JP Morgan analyst. Uh, his name's Ty Laban. Uh, he's a Web3 products and Onyx Digital Assets uh, over at Onyx by JP Morgan. And uh, I'll zoom up on this because this really gets into a lot. I won't go into all of this, but there, there's a lot within this tweet stream here that is very intriguing uh, in the essence of the whole process of how they went through uh, developing this DeFi transaction, but also some of the things they did. But back to the tweet here. Uh, so they used Polygon to trade because they wanted to do this on Ethereum, okay? Uh, future phases of Guardian will also explore blockchain uh, too, so that's going to kind of open up some interoperability for them. Uh, second, they used Aave, which I thought was uh, interesting, but what they did was they, did a, uh, they deployed a modified version of Aave Arc. Now, what we're talking about right now, for some of you guys might be going, what the hell is Paul talking about? Think of this just Aave being one of the DeFi titans. And what JP Morgan is, is doing here is essentially is taking one of the biggest steps of a major institutional uh, house to move into the DeFi space. And you'll see how we paint this picture out because there's a little bit of a, a Hansel and Gretel, Gretel here for sure. Uh, he goes on to talk about uh, third, they issued tokenized Singapore dollar deposits. This is a deposit token, which generally a liability of JPM. It's a native token giving uh, stability, on-chain value without scalability issues of stable coins. This is another problem. Uh, and then this is the first issuance of the tokenized deposits by a bank. Big, big deal. Um, another thing that played into this, I want to go down to his fourth uh, statement here. All right, so they use uh, W3C um, web compliance. This is verifi verifiable credentials to provide compliant access for Aave. This is, uh, or any other DeFi protocol, so this is going to work anywhere. Uh, VCs give much more fine-grained control than just allowing uh, listing addresses. This, again, gets back into uh, risk limits. Now, this is something I talk about all the time, is that at some point, when we see major institutions move in this direction, they're going to have to have this level of security. And I think that what JP Morgan has done is they've taken huge giant steps in the direction of being able to secure up assets and be able to give a lot of flexibility in DeFi uh, for their potential uh, programs. So on-chain VC verification is huge. He goes about talking about that next. It brings um, composability to identity, big. Uh, you can have little, uh, have little verifiers that know how to verify certain things and then you use them across dApps, bringing further standardization and portability. Again, this is this is the kind of innovation that you guys you guys are, are are really privy to something that is happening right before our very eyes is that the next tone of how finance is going to be created is being literally architected on Twitter, like in Twitter streams. And the reason this is so important because it will start to set the roadmap for a lot of other companies, a lot of other financial institutions, as well as big businesses to start to understand kind of how to go in this direction. Further on, he went into check out the verifier. We created one per party uh, in Guardian. That was their platform. Uh, so each can have their own rules, but anyone can see and validate these rules. Uh, sidebar, heavily regulated bank. We cannot enable money laundering and must undertake KYC. So they're just talking about KYC in the DeFi space. That's one thing they have to get out of the way. Uh, they also built an institutional wallet that ensures traders can never access company funds. Big deal. 
uh, and only approved DeFi protocols can be used. So this in its, uh, in its framework is, in, in my opinion, could be one of the biggest things that's happened in DeFi to date. Um, the reason that JP Morgan is in here and the fact that it's on Polygon to me is the real uh, component here. And you can, you can kind of take a look at the JPM token, the SG, this is the Singapore dollar, the SGD. Uh, and you can kind of see the transactions are already starting to move in. Uh, so it's real. This is something that they have really integrated in a big way. I think this is, as I said, this is going to be one of the things that really kind of breaks the stranglehold of traditional finance and starts to open up a lot of creativity of how DeFi can be used. Man, I bet Sam Bankman is starting to freak out because this would really give a lot of tool sets back to the problem that Bankman talks about a lot with DeFi, you know, the KYC issue. They've seen what somewhat solved this in essence. Sure, it's kind of a, a framework within a framework, but the point is, is, and I've said this many times, is you've got to have that capability in terms of security, uh, verifiability, all those kind of things for major institutional finance to really move in. So here it is, first industry pilot for digital asset and decentralized finance goes live. This is the, monitor, the Monetary Authority of Singapore, uh, MAS, announced today the first industry pilot uh, now under the Project Guardian, which is what we're talking about here with, with uh, JP Morgan, uh, explores potential, potential decentralized finance applications in wholesale funding markets has completed its first live trade. So the potential here, guys, is absolutely huge. The fact that Polygon is, uh, is really kind of the backbone of this, to me, only continues to solidify why I hold Polygon and why I think a lot of people are going to be looking to this layer two to be kind of the next, um, maybe the leader when it comes to innovation in Web3, especially as we start to see things in, in DeFi. I want to jump further, this coming over from the Polygon tw uh, Twitter account, WorldPay Global now enabling USDC settlement for clients on Polygon, uh, proof of stake change, uh, announcing during the ongoing, this was under their, their FinTech Fest. And WorldPay, if you don't know them much, they are a big merchant uh, and transactor for um, basically digital, digital funds. So it is a uh, a huge partnership, and if you look at some of the things they're talking about here, just to give you, this is their website, uh, FIS Global, and you look at the uh, the components here, a seamless payment experience now from start to finish and scale. Uh, Polygon's all part of this, 300, uh, 300 plus payment methods accepted, a million merchants, 126 currencies, dedicated customer service. You can kind of see, this is not a slouch. So. Uh, this kind of integration starts to open up those pipelines and a lot of those areas that I talk about often in terms of mass adoption, credibility, and uh, there's a lot happening and, you know, we've been kind of alluding to this for quite some time. And when we had the guys on for Matako, if you guys have watched that video, go back and watch my interview with Matako because Matako is a company that is leveraging some of these connecting points. Now, granted, they're not in this one, but they have a solution for what Citibank is trying to do. But the interesting point that they made in Mataco was that there's a lot of different major institutions that are already moving in this direction right now. So here's a report right here. This is Oliver Wyman, uh, DBS, Onyx right there with JP Morgan, uh, the SBI Digital Asset Holdings Company. Uh, all of this, this next generation of finance, this is kind of a blueprint for what is happening out there. There's a couple of points here that I wanted to draw attention to within the report itself. One was right here. This is kind of the tokenized payment instruments. 88% of global institutional investors are comfortable with digital representations of cash using blockchain. Uh, 88%. Uh, so according to, this is the 2022 Selnet survey. And then 91% of institutional investors are interested in investing in tokenized assets also on the Selnet. So what does this tell you guys? You got JP Morgan out early in the front typical. Um, you've got this massive pent-up demand occurring in institutional finance, and you've got a market that is starting to set frameworks in super projects like Polygon. All of this spells to me that we are very close to what could be opening up. And remember, the thing that has to happen in these downturns is you have to continue to build, and a lot of these frameworks are essentially being built right in front of us right now. So a great opportunity.
I want to further in just to kind of take a look at what Polygon's up to because there's a lot happening in the news with them as well. Top 10 Polygon games now by number of users. This is in seven days. Uh, you can kind of see the growth is starting to come. Uh, volume 277K right there on Planet IX. Uh, you've got Arc 8, uh, Bomb Crypto. We've talked about them before. Uh, Trade Race, Snook, we've seen them before, One World Nation. Uh, and then uh, Pegaxi, which has uh, been around a bit for, uh, you know, the Zed Run uh, competitors, among others, out there. But the point is, is that Polygon games are moving. Uh, they are starting to gain some traction in the space. I think this is another just good sign in general. Here was a uh, press release. Uh, CD announced a collaboration with Polygon Studios as well. Now, CD is a blockchain social media startup, basically... Uh, that has announced their their whole program is going into integrating into Web3 and what that might look like. So uh, creator with a Polygon native token, Polygon-based ERC-1155, all that's going to happen in the game token as a gift. So again, when you look at social platforms and the evolution of a lot of these platforms out there, I think Twitter is on a race right now. My question is how quick do they maybe bring Polygon into the game? If you look at CD, if you guys have not, you know, you don't know anything about it, just go to cd.xyz. You can kind of check a little bit about their, um, you know, about their social uh, platform itself. Here's a little bit there, Web3 game, DAO assets, uh, communication. I do think we are going to see a Web3 uh, DAO version of social at some point in the future. So it's definitely something that's going to be uh, popping into next level communication tools for sure. Uh, and especially around the side of developing communities, because you've seen the power, I think, of cri crypto Twitter. Uh, it's it's there. I think when we see the leverage into Web3, unless we see crypto Twitter really become a thing uh, outside of what we already know it to be, I think the, uh, you know, the intention of what Elon is trying to do from a wallet standpoint, integration of NFTs, those kind of things, along with other tool sets that are coming fast, uh, breakneck speeds, I think. Right now, it is a race, people. We are now starting to see real movement and utility coming into our space at, I think, rapid, rapid speed. Now, there'll be a lot of mistakes. Don't get me wrong. There's going to be a bunch. But it's very interesting to see this kind of leap. Here's Sandeep, um, obviously one of the co-founders. Reddit NFTs passing 10 million in sales in three months just to start. Imagine if they were able to do 50 million uh, annually, I don't think, I think we're going to see more than that. That would be 10% of Reddit's total revenue. You see that? 50%, 50 million, 10% of total revenue. The potential here is that this could become 50% of, of total revenue in just a few years. Uh, and imagine the amount of expansion that will happen within the Reddit communities itself, as well as how NFTs will expand in those kinds of communities. It goes back to the point of how social and how communities are going to be so significant in the uh, use case uh, for NFTs in the future. Uh, here's uh, them going further into it, Reddit, Reddit's NFT. Uh, yeah, we got that. Uh, kind of a renaissance is happening on Polygon as we speak. Look at the numbers right here. You can kind of see the reason I brought that one up is just Dunac Analytics on the collectible uh, sales volume on Polygon. So pretty significant here. Uh, when we see what's happening over on Reddit. So good for them, man. This is uh, cracking along in a way I think a lot of people don't necessarily understand. Uh, the other thing you have to watch is all the side industries that potentially could play into this. Here's McFarlane's to Toys. 30 years, uh, they let, they've led design, collectibles, some of the world's biggest brands, uh, and now they're expanding legacy McFarlane Toys Digital. AAA digital collectibles platform, guess what? Rarible, Polygon, Polygon Studios right there. So again, big drops in a big way. And I think, again, this goes back into the scenario of where the future of all this is rolling uh, for Web3 and what this might mean to not only creators, but also just business to business. We're going to see a lot more business applications. Uh, by the way, we're going to start to have some executives on and uh, people that essentially have actually went out and started to build the early state of how brands are putting in and integrating NFTs and the kind of uh, integrations that they're doing. So we're going to have a few of those executives on uh, coming soon. I'd love to get your feedback on brands that you would like to see that you know are maybe operating in the NFT space. Who would you like to talk to? 
let us know in the comments below. Make sure and smash the like button because this is one of the things that not only helps people start to learn what's happening in Web3 with projects like Polygon and really what's happening in finance, it's a place for people to truly get their first step into crypto. So help them enter the space by just liking the video and putting it in feeds out there all over the world. Uh, here's Studios talking about, here's a bullseye. This is the Killbox game, uh, building its first ever first person uh, shooter game on Polygon. And uh, again, the, even though this game itself is available on Google Play, I think we have a, a sheet right here. Here's the Killbox on Google Play right there. And you can kind of see, I mean, you know, not bad. Almost 30,000 reviews, 4.4 on uh, the game itself. But and then, again, use case of a two of a Web2 uh, format and platform being integrated into Web3, repurposed and kind of reintroduced there. Some other things that are happening, this was the Q3 report on Polygon that came over from Masari. And I wanna break down a few things that we highlighted in this article um, right here. First of all, active addresses hit all time high 6 million, uh, which is great. Uh, and, and you think about this, the validator set grew by over 100% since 2021. Uh, supply stake rose to 38%. Uh, that's up from like 29.8. So again, good growth here. Uh, they invested $1 billion and raised $450 million in ZK Scaling Tech. This is the thing that essentially is going to give them the ability to truly scale. Uh, so lots happening there. Global market cap on the crypto industry ranging about uh, a trillion mark. Poly Polygon a cap is up 43% quarter over quarter. So that to me further solidifies my position on Polygon, which is very strong. 40% um, of the total spy moved from vesting to staking. Good. And then about 270 million of Matic was also earmarked for the treasury in October. So that's another uh, good move here. Gaming transactions spiked 100% in uh, September. And then the number of NFT Polygon um, uh, users on Polygon broke 5 million in August. Uh, and the number of transfers exceeded 50 mil. So that, again, I think a lot of that was obviously with Reddit, but they're, just the fact that we're seeing this kind of growth is uh, pretty amazing. And I think you guys have heard me say this before. Polygon's biz dev team, these guys are, uh, they're world class. There's, I have yet to see a Web3 team that is, is pushing at this pace. It's almost like they're fighting a ghost. I don't understand what's going on here. These guys are at, at breakneck speeds. Um, ongoing Polygon still building at a heightened pace, just to my point, allowing independent teams experiment with different scaling approaches. Uh, they're fostering intense collaboration, uh, which I think is, is probably the magic behind what they're doing is this collaborative effort, which we find in web three more so than we ever found in web two. But I think just that in itself, it has really kind of set them to the next level. I often wonder if there is a layer two that can truly even overtake Polygon, and, and in most cases, is Polygon, Polygon going to get to a point where maybe it becomes even as important as Ethereum itself, especially as we start to see just the breadth of what they're doing within the industry and getting into all that. Anyway, I'd love to get your thoughts on this. Are you a Polygon holder? If you are, drop some comments in uh, the sections below. And then also just let us know of projects that you're following that are Polygon oriented, or if in general, maybe you're into DeFi and you kind of want to play that game, I'd love to kind of get your feedback on how you see this playing into DeFi in the future. Obviously, we saw a very advanced tool here from JP Morgan and kind of their rollout strategy, but I'd love to hear what you guys are seeing out there in the space as well. All right, if you're not part of our Diamond Circle, make sure and jump in right now. It's the place to get uh, additional content, additional analysis, all that kind of stuff. All you have to do is just click the uh, link below, join. It's free for you guys. So it's very easy to do. If you guys want to reach me, it's out on Twitter, at Paul Barron. We'll catch you next time right here on TechPath.